Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first MBA, MBS show of the term. Uh, I'm Bootsy. I'm the um, newly appointed um, Minister of Media, and I'm here with Delegate Magic. How are you doing today, Magic? I'm doing brilliantly because we have just passed 1,000 endos on the Delegate for the first time in several months. So I'm very happy about that. Uh, how are you today? I'm doing well. I I was really surprised. It's been a while since um, I've been back in the North Pacific. I was surprised that you weren't already at a thousand Indos. I remember um, back a couple of years ago, a thousand Indos on a delegate was kind of the expected. So it's it's really exciting to see that you're back to a thousand um, endorsements. I'm sorry that one of those can't be mine because I'm currently. Um, you know, deployed with the North Pacific Army, but that's really exciting that you've got a thousand endorsements. So congratulations, Magic. Thank you very much. So how, how's life been for you, Magic? Been treating you nice? I know you've had a little bit of stuff going on uh, with your real life. Has everything smoothed over or is that still? I, I, I somehow am managing to avoid catching COVID in a house where multiple people have COVID. So that's great at least um i'll take another test tomorrow now and i'll I'll have it but for now i'm free and clear and can live life to an extent um yeah that that, that's about how i am it's just been dodging covid a week yeah that's definitely um that's definitely something that um a lot of people are having to do especially with covid you know starting to come out again um, with the new omicron variant so that's it's definitely um, something that um, a lot of people are facing, and I'm glad that you haven't caught COVID. So, um, you just made it sound like it was a new release or a patch or something. I'm I'm sorry. That was not my, <laughs> that was not my intention. No, no, I like it. Let's let's go. Let's the, let's the, only talk about COVID as if it was a as if it's in beta. Yeah, definitely. Well, hey. New new patch of uh, COVID. So, um, hey, let's make make things a little bit more fun in in this um, crazy world that we're living in right now. Um, so, speaking of crazy world that we're living in, we have just started the second term um, under a magic delegacy in the North Pacific. It's really exciting. And in, and in 2014, who would have th- thought that would happen? Yeah, it's definitely um, super. <laughs> It's it's been a long journey <laughs> to get here. Um, uh, I'm just enjoying it. I'm just no, actually, I'm not enjoying it because I'm determined. I'm determined to uh, get things done this term. We've got a legislative agenda that we're going to put into place. It's, we're going to change up how citizenship applications work. Hopefully, we're going to do. We're going to give our foreign uh, ministry. Well, we're going to give our foreign policy more scope to um, see us working with certain people and stuff. And we've got big changes coming in kind of in in the lean of our independence. That's a big change that's coming in. It's coming very soon. Ooh, that's exciting. Yeah, citizenship in itself has not changed drastically since uh the what what was the name of the bill that changed citizenship um, I, I i can't remember the name of the bill because i don't remember bill names um except for the agora and i hate that i hate the branding on it but um uh um it, we haven't really touched citizenship since we extended it to the rmb whereas before you had to post on the forum and now you can you can post on the forum or the R&B every 30 days and keep your citizenship. Um, that was a change that came a long time ago, now four or five years at least. Yeah, and uh, it's probably time to, to touch it again because increasingly what we're going to see is people without residential IPs who only ha- are able to access uh, the internet via mobile connections. Yeah, because I can remember when I first joined, it was just the RAA members and then it became i remember when they started talking about citizens versus residents i was like whoa this is like a big change and now it's not really like it makes sense how citizens and residents are different from one another but i remember that being a big point of contention for the citizenry at the time um to have citizens who don't 
regularly vote and how do you manage quorum and then of course like you said we added um, RMB um, posting to um, one of the requirements um, that you know you could do instead of posting on the forum um, and then you said there's another change in uh, the works which you know considering who you appointed as your um, minister of WA affairs I can definitely see kind of where you're wanting to go with that um so well it, it, it's a, it's something that's only going to increase because something like 80 percent of connections now are mobile it's probably less but it's like there's a significant proportion of the world population who only access the internet via mobile connections and if they're playing ns and if they're in tmp i want to see if we can get them involved and just remove a requirement. Um, there's obviously a conversation to be had about security and identifying uh, alts of players and stuff like that. Um, at the same time, I mean, we people know about TMP problems with players who went under different names previously and are a bit dodgy and have managed to find their way into TMP and ha have, in some cases, lots of endorsements. And we've not known about them for years. So it doesn't appear to be doing anything to stop them. Yeah, it's definitely, um, you know, I'd like to see, because obviously um, NS does a really great job of um, tracking, like, duplicates for um, the WA. Of course, they've got a lot of other ways that they're, they're tracking stuff, so maybe we can mimic um some of how nation states does its tracking to um figure out exactly you know who's who and definitely that'd be a, a conversation that admin would definitely have to be brought in involved in because even as technical as i am i'm not not exactly sure on how to best track different people across the internet so um uh, um i would suggest that at a certain point we're gonna have to have a conversation about whether it's an issue that's going to call that it, it's an issue worth considering with regards to this because i think tmp as a region and its democratic institutions are robust enough to to you know not be exploited in that way um like the last person who was proxying and got around their systems was dirk in say 2013 2014 2015 something like that um yeah i don't really see it as much of an issue i've had conversations with admin about whether this would impact workload and stuff like that if it if we changed how the things but it's it's, it's part of the conversation that i'm going to start very soon in the regional assembly and i obviously i invite all citizens to to partake in it yeah, definitely. And there, are, you know, the regional assembly is very good about letting um, us know exactly what's working and what's not working. Um, I actually read back on the um, reject fascism um, bill a while back, um, and I remember that being a very contentious um, bill in terms of you know how it would fit into um, the law. So the regional assembly is very good about saying what will work and what will not work and um you know sometimes it does trip itself up in terms of um you know trying to stick to its um standing rules and and stuff and you know sometimes we uh <laughs> stumble up in terms of the regional assembly but you know we are democratic and that's one of the things that's great about tmp is that we like to have as many people at the table as possible okay Right. Uh, anything else? Would you like to talk about the election? So, um, really, one of the things that I don't know if it stuck out to anybody else, but one of the things about your campaign that really stuck out to me was um, the fact that you called it a um, redemption arc for you. Um, would you mind speaking a little bit more about what you mean by it being a redemption arc? Um, it's. <laughs> It's a little bit of um, me be being primarily a role player, 
and a lot of me being arrogant enough to think that I'm the protagonist in this story. Um, what, uh, less than three, less than four years ago, I was a uh, Delete on Site player and had been since 2014. Um, they let me back in in what, November, in November 2018, and everything since then has sort of felt like it was going to end up here. And that, for me, it had to end up here. I had to one day become delegate. Because to go from delete on site, not welcome on nation states, and for TMP to go from people criticizing TMP, for me being still being here, and for being a, a roleplay runner, for leading TMP's roleplay team, people used to criticize TMP for that. So for that journey to go from there to me being you know, the largest delegate in the game to having the most endorsements in the game to leading the major feeder in the game. That is something that's very important to me and it's something that every day I'm thankful for TMP voters for, but I'm immensely gratified as well that I got here because it's it's... It's vindication for me for sticking out things, for not sneaking back like others did when they got made to leave on site and ruining things for themselves when they got found out and for, you know, sticking by the rules since I've come back and showing that 2014 me is not the same as 2021 me or 2022 me. It's it's a growth story and I'm a big thing about narratives. I've got a big thing. That's why I have some of the cabinet members that I do have because I do believe in people's personal narratives within this game and the growth that they can show in it and that's part that, that factors into my decisions on staffing on policy making on on everything narrative is a is a big part of that bigger in some areas than other but narrative does play a role and I like making stories. And this is what this is. This is my story. Yeah, and I, when I read that, so I took a different um, take onto it. Um, I remember um, when you, I believe it was September, October, when um, the North Pacific versus Magic, I know it was kind of an open secret that you were potentially going to run in that January um, election, I think that was what 2016, 2017. Wouldn't no, I was still on site at the time, so it was a few years later. A few years later. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, no, no, no. I no, I know what you mean. I've been yeah. since I've been back. They have been in TMP's courts probably more than anyone. And again, yeah, no, it just it just plays into the narrative for me. It plays into. Like, obviously, I don't do things like what I did for an, for narrative purposes to make my story better or whatever. It's just, it's, it's something that happened. I regret it. I don't remember it because I was blind drunk. And, you know, um, yeah, I've, I've moved on since then. And, yeah, no, I guess this is this is also part of that. It's also redeeming myself for that. So probably one of the um, biggest talking points of your campaign was um, the combination of uh, the Ministry of Communications with the Ministry of Radio. I know that even caught me off guard because I know we talked about radio um, prior oh, to... We did. We did talk about radio. So, um, can you tell me a little bit about your thought process and, you know, when you had decided, you know, that that merge was going to happen or, um, you know, what kind of caused that to occur? I, uh, I had vacillated on that, um, for a few weeks before I wrote my platform. I wrote my platform a day or so before I posted it. I had some ideas, of course, um, but deciding whether to go whether to keep comms and radio around or whether to you know merge them try something new 
because comms is a fairly old ministry like it's been around for, for several years and it's it's risen fallen as things happen radio is newer and really a culmination of the work um lvg grande previously did um but since then radio has sort of declined in activity um my initial targets for activity for radio last term were one show a week now i know there's some work that goes into planning and writing scripts for shows and getting people involved but i don't think that's an unreasonable target and unfortunately for various regions that wasn't met last term and so it was a case of do i want to make a clean break reassess everything revamp what we can revamp reform what we can reform and go again or do i want to continue the ministry along the road that it had been on um i prefer this way i think it's going to be more successful long term um there's various things that we could have done and kept them separate but at the same time um comms previously had served mainly to write stuff to go out to foreign regions as foreign updates now that that's not happening anymore because there was a lack of authors there wasn't really much for comms to do especially when it was planning to do things and then people didn't write articles or get them in on time or or even start working on them so by merging the two we can pull more resources together we can uh focus on certain things i think this term we're probably going to focus more on radio the radio sides and we are going to focus on the other sides of things and you know hopefully going forward we will better be able to provide content both in radio and in written form and i think that's something we'll be able to do you know depending on how the work goes this time yeah i can definitely um see um where you're coming from in terms of focusing more on radio than on the printed stuff like you said it, it is hard to get people to um you know writer's block is is real um so getting interested people and then getting those interested people to then go ahead and write something um or or two um barriers to getting people to write so i definitely think that i'm gonna have to step up and write some articles myself hopefully to shine a light um to where the ministry needs to go um but that's that's super exciting to hear that you know you saw an area where you know you needed some um i lost my see i lost my train of thought and i'm not even trying to write something um you know you saw an area of improvement and you went on a path to um improve the um ministry so besides the ministry of um media you know when did those other plans for the different ministries start to form for you um some stuff we've had worked on for a few weeks prior to the election um the plans for the ministry of defense and what we're doing with the mpa going forward they sort of crystallized both prior to and during the stargate incident um it's time for a change in in that sense of where our military activity is focused and we think this is the best way going forward to grow the grow the mpa and do some interesting things and to re-engage with some of our oldest allies the south pacific is a defender region that means some of our military activity should be with them should be cooperating with them the mpa primarily as a source of activity is yeah a thing but it's also it should form part of our foreign affairs program it should form part of our older alliances it should form part of how we re-engage with the wider ns world defenders are in the ascendancy currently i know raiders are currently holding liberaven with 200 or so endos but up until that operation which was vastly helped out by some very strange goings on with 
without Nate and the Sai, right up until that point, defenders have been winning on the battlefield again and again and again and again and again for, say, 12 months at least, 18 months now. So it sort of makes sense to look at what they're doing, see if we can adopt some of the things they're doing, and, you know, get involved with them and, and see what they're doing. Our independence means we do things that are in our interests. It's in our interests to be friendly with the South Pacific, to be interacting and friendly with the rejected realms, who are also a def largely a defender region. They have a defender military. I don't see why we wouldn't work with them, especially when the defender side has some of the best players in the RD game currently. So, yeah, that's basically my thinking on the Ministry of Defence. Um, others, Home Affairs, it was pretty easy to just <clears throat> um, figure out what we were doing, because most of what we're doing there is just continuing. Home Affairs is an understated ministry, but had a very good term last term. So it's about continuing that momentum forwards. Uh, culture is had some upheaval. I didn't expect Sarah to go, and it's unfortunate that she did. And uh, I hope she's successful in whatever else she it is she's doing. In I think she's embowed on that. Um, but yeah, culture. We it's about continuing our weekly content. It's about. Uh, we've got Flag Day, we've got April Fools, so we can do some fun stuff there. And we can also maybe work with some of the other ministries. Uh, with the card, Ministry of Cards is doing a card symposium this term. The card awards will happen during the symposium. And they had a fantastic time last time. I brought the GES in with a view to saving the ministry, and we saved the ministry. He's, he's a giant of the cards game and was incredibly effective last term, and I'm so glad to see it because the way card gameplay has gone, and I know we we had uh, Giovanni Land in the in the uh, listening earlier. I don't know if they're still there, but you know, Geo's really good at the cards game. The TWP delegate, and, you know, maybe I'd like to see us work with them on some card stuff. Season 3 is supposedly right around the corner, so we can do stuff with that as well. So Cards has a bright future. It's a sustainable ministry now. We made technical changes that made our lottery sustainable. Um, yeah, it's just... We're, we're doing great We're doing great things in Cards, and long may it continue. So I'll kind of, because um, I've been taking notes while you've been talking, so I wanted to make sure I followed up. I didn't want to interrupt your flow of conversation. Um, but in terms of the Stargate incidents, you know, uh, Magic, you came out really, um, you know, bold with um, your actions. And, you know, it, it did make some of the people on um, the NS Forum and some within TMP you know, not not the happiest, you know. Do you still stand by what you did with Stargate? A hundred percent. hundred and ten percent. I'd do it again, because why... TMP has made it clear repeatedly over the ten and a half years that we've had a treaty with Stargate that you do not stage military gameplay in Stargate. You don't touch it. You know, you don't use it for fawning, you don't raid it, you don't jump from it, you don't do anything that would jeopardize Stargate. That's what Raiders did. To throw defenders off, they went for Stargate. I mean, okay, they weren't cross-endorsed, so the Raiders couldn't have taken the delegacy. But they had to know that defenders were going to jump. Because defenders always jump. They have the numbers to jump, and so they did. You know, the protestations of innocence and it not being their fault fell on deaf ears because it was their fault. If they're not there, defenders aren't there, delegacy doesn't get taken. Defenders reached out to me personally, reached out to my government, explained the situation, offered to help Sidey up, and they did. And we worked with them on that, and it was good to work with them on that. It's, I don't like closing embassies. I don't like ending relationships. I happen to like on a personal level, lots of the people involved in TBH and LWU. 
I like Joe. I like Mira. I like, you know, plenty of people on that side of things. But you don't touch Stargate. And they accept that now. They've, they've accepted that. So, like, I can't... If TMB has decided that Stargate is important enough to have a treaty with us where we would provide intelligence and mutual defense to them, then I don't see how... What, I don't see what actions I could have taken differently. Because you can't let that go. Because if you let that go, what you're saying is our treaties don't matter. Us saying don't touch Stargate doesn't matter. Because we like you or because we work with you. That's fine. You can do that to Stargate. We'll just blame someone else, despite it being your fault. That's just not how things work under me. And not how things would work, I think, under any other TMP delegate. This is just something that had to had to happen because of what happened. And then uh, looping back to the um, Ministry of Culture. Sorry, I'm popping all over the place because I'm trying to keep questions. It's fine. It's all good. <laughs> so, I like it. Um, with the Ministry of Culture, I know um, a couple of people um, personally that told me that they... Um, you know, had applied to be Minister of Culture, what ultimately um, won you over in terms of selecting your Minister of Culture over, um, you know, other um, applicants? Um, well, first of all, I want to thank um, the work uh, Tringer did uh, after Sarah resigned. Um, I didn't expect to be looking for a Minister of Culture. I was surprised when they said they couldn't stay on. Um, happily, they're staying on as Deputy Minister, so that's excellent. Um, they'll be still around to help do things like the law nerds, which we were planning um, prior to the end of the term. Um, uh, it was a really intensive uh, interview process. I think in the end I had seven or eight people reach out to me. And we had conversations about what my expectations were, what they could offer, um, what the plan was. And um, some of them were longer than others, but I just want to thank again everyone who reached out um and it was a, a really difficult decision um i only decided as i was writing my opening address on who my choice would be and i chose katuda because based on um the enthusiasm they showed at the start of the last term and the willingness to work that they showed um Plus the answers to what I wanted and what they were what they were offering and their ideas just made them uh, the person who I thought would fit in best with my team and be the best to bring the ministry forward and have a successful term. So despite um, some of the challenges that you had last term, um, you actually practically had zero competition in this last election um you know what are your thoughts on that and you know would you have wanted to see you know either um lord dominator or unfortunately damien actually you know put up an actual um campaign or do you think that uh, there's go ahead or do you think that there was anyone that you would have liked to see compete against you in this election? Um, there were certainly people who had opinions on me running prior to it, and there were people who were like, who seemed to be under the impression that I wasn't going to run. Um, I had a moment where I told some people where, that I wasn't running, and then I told them I was, and that was several weeks ago. Um, so maybe that's how that impression spread, but Considering the lack of serious candidates, what were people expecting to happen if I hadn't run? Who would have run then? Because no one seemed willing to step up. And and if I wasn't gonna run present a image present a you know, a vision to the region of what what it would be like under them. Lord Dominator could be a quite good delegate one day 
but they run the risk of repeatedly running joke campaigns and only being seen as a joke candidate. At some point, they've got to offer a serious campaign if they're serious about running. Or they've got to stop running. I would have liked to have seen three or four different serious campaigns in this election. As it was, mine was the only one. I was the only person running seriously. I, Unfortunately, Damien didn't put out a platform. That's how serious they were about running. Lord Dominator could have offered a serious challenge to me had they put out a serious campaign, because I happen to think they're a very competent player. What I want to happen this term, and what I'll talk to you about later on in terms of um, uh, the Northern Lights content, is to offer people the chance to put forward what their vision of TMP is. What they think it should stand for, what they think it should be doing, what they think it should look like. In, you know, six months' time, or a year's time. Or right now. And I want to give people the opportunity to do that. Outside of an election, outside of the pressure of convincing voters and you know, maybe having issues with in terms of getting that vision across because it's an election. I want to offer them the chance to do that. So we will need to have a conversation about that. And at the same time, I'm not going to pretend to be upset that I didn't face a more serious challenge. I would have liked to have seen it for the in terms of the region's health, but I don't mind winning elections. I only have a run in elections that I think I can win. It's so I'm in like two minds. I'm in the yay, I won. And I didn't face a big challenge. But also I recognize that you know I'm term limited now. What if no one serious runs again? I don't think it'll happen. I think lots of people will be working on stuff in the lead up to that election and will present serious visions for the region. But not having a serious challenger does suggest that maybe we need to do things differently. I don't know how, but it's something to think about. A way to encourage people to run. Because it is a big thing. You've run for delegate before, haven't you? And it's like, that can't have been an easy decision to make. No, it's it's definitely um, like you said. It's it's really trying to figure out um, because some people, you know, hold their cards close to their chest and are like, you know, nah, I'm not gonna run. Um, I remember one of my delegacy campaigns. I thought I had it in the bag, and um, somebody nominated Silly String, and she accepted. And I was like, oh crap! Like that that was my worst nightmare. And she definitely like destroyed me in the votes. Um, but, like, you never see those things, um, coming, so it's, it's really, you know, trying to see, well, you know, is this person gonna run? If this person runs, you know, how do I, you know, adapt and see, um, you know, probably the closest I've come to, um, winning was against, um, Plimbabria, um, but definitely having, uh, Lord Ravenclaw endorse Plimbabria as his successor was not an easy, um, obstacle to um clear so um no not delegates um obviously um but yes like you said it's, it's definitely um difficult especially when people like to hold their cards um close to their chest or people will say they're running to clear the field a little bit and then they don't end up running um so yeah that's definitely something that's um really tough to to navigate um but I, I am a little disappointed, like you said, that, you know, there were a lot of people that um, I've, I saw arguments and stuff that uh, you had with um, some members of our community. And, um, you know, it, I, I'm a big put your money where your mouth is kind of person. Um, so it's, it's very sad to see that those type of people, if they weren't going to run, at least, you know, give that to somebody who is going to run, you know, say, hey, you know, Lord Dominator, I know you're the one actually running, but I've got some amazing ideas that I think would help you overcome um, 
you know, Mad Jack's campaign. Um, so definitely, um, or using the, the private media, that's become such a big thing, um, you know, since I last was in the North Pacific, you know, and a lot of them are, you know, silly and, um, you know, wacky um, news medias, but they're, they're really calling um, truths out that, you know, most people wouldn't say if they weren't, you know, being satirical about it, like Greitbart, you know, a lot of those things are speaking some truth, but of course they're supposed to be funny, so don't take them too seriously. So, um, let's see, what else did I have to talk about? Is there anything you'd like to talk about, Magic, while I look through my notes? Um, just to say again, I'm very thankful and happy that we're up over a thousand end days. Um, the summer low hit TMP really hard. It was the worst one I've ever experienced, and it seemed to hit TMP particularly hard compared to other regions. So I'm I'm glad that we're recovering, and we're recovering in a healthy way. Like there's not had to be drama to drive activity, which perhaps would have been the you know the thing six years ago, seven years ago. Drama would have been used to try and create some activity. Um, I'm glad it's not that. I'm glad that we're a healthy community in that way. And I'm glad that we're a growing community in that way. Uh, with the R&B and uh, better outreach, I recently turned the, changed the welcome telegram so that at the end of the welcome telegram, as well as it being all in English, there are spoilers with versions of the welcome telegram in Portuguese and Spanish and French and in Russian. Just widely, widely spoken languages that you know, we've had influxes from Russia and currently we're referencing one from Brazil. So it's just sort of a way to be in our outreach, also helping out people who might not fully understand English. Um, these are just Google translates, so they might not be the most accurate, but, you know, maybe we'll have another look later on in the term if I can find some people who speak those languages to take a look and correct things but it's just one of those things where i feel like um if we can make tmp as welcoming as possible to people of all languages then that also will help you know our community and make our community healthier make our community more sustainable in the long run and that's something i think is really important and it's something that not a lot of regions are getting right currently yeah, I definitely, it's it's weird that you mentioned that, because um, I also was thinking the other day about getting some of our tutorial um, videos in some different languages. Obviously, that would have to be more um, actually getting people who speak those languages, because I wouldn't want um, Google Translate actually doing all of the tutorial videos, because who knows what Google Translate is going <laughs> to um, spit out in terms of tutorials. But getting some of those members who are um, bilingual or who have um, one of those languages as their um, first language, definitely um, reaching out to them and seeing if we can get some tutorial videos to uh, really help those new players coming from Russia, Brazil, uh, places like that to, to really help, um, you know, see if they can stay in TMP instead of hit, hitting the move to other region um, button when they first arrive. Um, so in your first uh, campaign, you really, um, it was kind of doom and gloom with the um, frontiers and uh, strongholds. Um, you know, you were really upfront and saying like, hey, you know, I was wrong. Um, and you were um, kind of glad to be wrong about um, you know, the frontiers and strongholds. Do you see that being a big thing in the future, or do you think it's not going to be as big as you had anticipated? I think I was caught up in the hype at the time, because it's such a big change. And um, the way it had been spoken about, it seemed like it was more imminent than it turned out to be. So I was, I, I was wrong on that prediction. Um, from what I understand now, it's not going to happen until after Season 3 of Cards happens. So we have some time to prepare. We have some time to discuss both as a region and with some of our uh, allies like TSP. Because I plan, I plan to hold uh, talks with Roven and um, other members of TSP of, of their government um, on, you know, maybe how, maybe whether we can figure out a joint approach to frontiers and strongholds. 
definitely. Because it's going to be a big thing, like like the change from having frontiers, you know, UCRs being able to spawn in new nations. That's going to be really, really big. We're going to get 50% less nations spawning in TMP. And how we react to that is going to be a really big thing in how... Um, how sustainable sustainable we are as a community and the direction of the community is going to go. Um, you know, we could form our own frontiers and help build them up and use them to filter people into TMP and have multiple regions all conferring citizenship in TMP if we wanted to. That's an option to go with. I don't know that we'll do it. I don't know if there's the appetite there to do it. But that's why we've got to have the conversation. Because at the same time, what we could also do, if we went to an extreme with it, and if we passed legislation allowing us to, is go around and try and kill off frontier regions. So that we would then get more spawns. If that was possible. Or that, you know, we could have treaties with some frontiers to protect them and target other frontiers to extinguish them and, you know, either destroy the region or turn it into a stronghold or whatever so that our friendly frontiers have have a higher proportion of the spawns for frontiers. That could be a way to go. I don't think it's the way we'll go. I think, I think with the new lean of our independence that we're planning to implement over this term, and hopefully over many more terms, um, we'll be more on the reactive side and we'll be more working with regions to, you know, help protect frontiers, provide expertise, I guess, on uh, on security, on uh, region building, if regions want it, if they reach out to us, if we have good relations with them. At the same time, you know, maybe we just don't want anything to do with it at all. And TMP will just not react to this new meta that's in the game. And if we decide we do that, then we decide we do that. We decide it's in our best interest. I don't think that's a good idea. But it's not for me alone to decide. It's for the whole region. Yeah, that's definitely one of TMP's... That is one of TMP's uh, strengths as... Is it's democracy and it's crazy to think um you know i've been listening in to the the wa symposium which is going on um right now and we can discuss that a little bit later um but you know it's crazy to think that there are a lot of regions and stuff who don't use the um you know the by the people um voting on um the regions wa um, you know, I kind of thought that's how every region did it was, you know, whatever the people decided, you know, that was what, um, you know, the delegate voted for. Um, so it's definitely interesting to be involved in those um, WA symposiums to see other people's point of views on that topic. So besides the WA symposium, do you have any other, I know you mentioned a cards symposium, is that correct? Did I hear that correctly? Oh uh, yeah, that is, uh, uh, that's, you know, we're, we're planning that right now. Um, I don't have a firm date, but we're, we are planning. And, um, you know, we'll have the card awards during that. We'll have uh, discussions on playing cards, on, on, on um, just that entire area of the game. I'll admit I'm not most informed on cards, which is why I listen to my very capable uh, Minister of Cards, DGES, who is great at this sort of thing. And, you know, he's got my full support in planning and executing a really good card symposium. Um, I think there's also, uh, I, I had a brief discussion uh, on a suggestion to maybe add a new celebration day for TMP um, centered around cards. Um, we could do that. We don't have to legislate for that, but we could put it in our laws in the cultural declaration section of the League Code, or as delegate, I could declare a certain day 
as, say, card state, and maybe that could be part of the card symposium. But that is also a discussion I'll be having with DGES and with the wider cards ministry, and perhaps even the cards guild, which passed two years of life in uh, the last term. So that, that is another area, <laughs> like, that is another area where TMP has innovated. I, before us, I don't know if any region had a ministry of cards, um, and we do, and that started with the Cards Guild. And everyone who's put work in the Cards Guild, from Praetor to DGES and everyone in between, has shown that, you know, that cards is, can be a really big part of a region's life, and can generate activity and all sorts of that kind of thing. Yeah, like like you, I'm not big into the card scene. I just kind of answer the issues, open the cards, and I'm like, cool, that's awesome, got what I got. Um, but yeah, it's super exciting uh, that we have a ministry of cards and that there are people that are, um, you know, willing to contribute their, their own personal cards to help TMP grow in terms of that card market, I guess is the correct terminology. So definitely exciting. Um, are there any um, celebration days in, that fall into the term? I have no idea what the, the holidays uh, are. We have, we, we have Flag Day, which I believe is a holiday rather than a celebration day, um, which is at the, towards the end of the time, I think it's April 27th. And we'll, we, we'll, you know, we'll look into doing something about that. Um, card day, uh, Flag Day events have been a mixed bag over the years so um, I don't want to rehash anything but I do want also to be able to do something and I'll be having conversations with Katuda about that and also about whether we want to do anything for April Fools April Fools can be fun but NS is what it's 21 years old now or 19 years old everyone's done most of the year April Fools you know there's only so many times you can pretend to be cooed by the MPO <laughs> Sorry, that got, that caught me off guard, Mesh. Um, yeah, that's definitely. So will the coup by the MPO. <laughs> yes, it will. Um, gosh, you made me lost my train of thought. Hold on, Magic. If you listen closely, viewers, you can hear the cogs whirring inside Bootsy's head. There, there aren't many working up there, but they, they do work. So, <laughs> um, let's see. What else do I have to talk to you about? We're getting close to the end. Ah, uh, your vice delegate, Sir Casto. Um, he, he got a pretty good challenge for um, the vice delegacy. Um, do you think if he wouldn't have been reelected that you would have had a great term with Garun Garundu? I've been calling him Garundo, which I realized was not his name. Um, do you think you would have had a similar um, role um, with Garundo, Garun Garundu, or do you think that? Gore. Just, just call him Gore. Um, <laughs> Gore. Um, Gore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, if Gore had won, it would have been a different dynamic because, you know, you can't have the same dynamic with two different people, especially when Casto is so unique. Um, yeah, um, you know, I, I'd have been fine working with, with Gore. Like, he's not problematic. He's a hard worker. He would have he would have done the work, and he would have had a very able security council around him to help him with the transition likely helped uh, Casto and likely helped me. The transition was overly long last time, and we've gone through that several times in in uh, in various places. Um, yeah, yeah, so anyone who is planning to stand for delegate or vice delegate and doesn't have a lot of endorsements should join the WA quite quickly and get them. Um, oh, or at least be very proactive in getting them. Uh, in terms of working with Casto or in terms of working with Gore, um, it's very much the same in terms of like, I just want to make TMP work and make TMP work for as many people as possible and make it as welcoming as possible. I'd like that I have Casto as both the vice delegate and my lead game side advocate. I'd have had conversations with Gore about whether they wanted to do that. Um, you know, it's. It, 
the vice delegate can be involved in government, but at the same time, they don't have to be involved in government. So it all depends on, on who the vice delegate is. Like if they just want to work on the security side of things and the endorsement side of things, that's fine. I'll, I'd, I'd have found someone else to be lead game side advocate. Yeah, that definitely, um, and you know, that what that is one of Sarcasto's strengths is, um, you know, uh, that, that, bleh, that, uh, game side elements, um, he, I remember getting a notification on, um, nation states and I was like, what is this notice? Um, and it was, he had posted his, um, campaign and all of his questions, um, as a dispatch and on nation states, um, the site itself and that was um, really good i'm sure that a lot of people who you know weren't on uh the forum but still citizens they were able to see like hey you know he's running for um vice delegate you know here are the questions that were asked let me go vote for him because um you know i i've seen him all the time on the r&b so that was definitely one of his strengths and i'm sure that's what helped him get um that nice lead that he had over gore um, Barbarino said, call him more on idiot. I'm, I'm sure he's referring to Gore, not you, Magic. But if, but if so, <laughs> but if so, Magic, <laughs> you were a more on idiot. So there you go. Wow. So. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. I love you, Magic. So I'm, I'm going to fire you. Bring back Gap. You, uh, you're going to fire me and okay, well, that's. That's fine. I'd yeah, yeah. Love to you, see you some. Fired gap. <laughs> I'd love to see someone put in as much effort as I do. So. Wow. <laughs> so hey. You can't. You can't say that until May. Okay. I'll. I will continue through till May. Wonderful. <laughs> hey, I'm confident. So. All right. We're looking at. Hey. Yeah. Do you have anything else for me? Or can I... Oh, I don't know what I was going to say there. Do you have anything else for me? Uh, we, I was about to say, we've got about eight minutes. Do you have any closing thoughts, Magic? Uh, you know, it was a interesting election. It was a decent first term. Second term's going to be better. And it's time to get to work. It definitely... I'm excited. So I guess I'll do one last icebreaker question. What, if you could get anybody in nation states, present or past, to serve um, in your cabinet, who would those people be? Okay. Um, I would like to see Noto from Europia as Minister of Home Affairs over here. Um, for those who don't know, and I'm pretty sure that will be most people, uh, Noto was an integration machine and a recruiting machine. They were really, really very good at it. And um, I don't know if they're still around, but uh, in the uh, early and mid 2000s in uh, Europia, they were brilliant at it. And I'd like to see what they could do with our systems and, uh, you know, a more automated system than what was around back then. I think that'd be a really interesting experiment to see. Um, I've always, I've enjoyed a number of our WA ministers. Um, Holdem, Boston Castle is really good currently. Um, if I could think of a past one, maybe bring Tloms back in. They were quite good at WA stuff. Um, or I guess Kretox, if they were still around. Um... Ministry of Defense, I like Cooper. Um, Rom's good at it. Rom, 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 I really wanted to be around for my first term, but they chose to leave um, TMP, and they chose to leave for, for a good reason. I'd never disparage anyone who um, chose to leave uh, TMP or any region for 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 the reason they did. Um, it, I just have regrets on that front. And uh, I'd have liked to have seen what they could do this term. I'm excited to see what Cooper's going to do this term because I think Cooper is an underrated player, an underrated TMP. -er. People didn't really take them seriously until this the last term. 
and they have all the potential in the world to be one of the better ministers of defense that we've had. Um, others, culture. I liked Sirix here as culture minister. I didn't like him at the time, but with the benefit of hindsight, I think they were a good culture minister. That would have been an interesting one, and I kind of regret that they didn't um, they didn't approach me. <clears throat> um, I suppose I could have approached them, but they don't seem to be too interested in the TMP government stuff. Uh, there's loads of people that I could bring in from the past who I think would do a good job. But I think by looking at that in general, those kind of questions are sort of gotchas because you then because you then start to compare the current cabinet to those players. And it's like it can be undermining if if you take the opinion of this person from years ago, I have an affinity for and I thought they did a really good job and I'd like to have them back now. Because then you, you start to compare that minister to this person who say they were own, say they were around 10 years ago and you remember them, but you have this idealized version of them in your head and maybe the reality of it was different. Maybe they were carried by a team of very able deputies or maybe there was stuff behind the scenes that you didn't know about that would make them inappropriate in the modern day so you can start to undermine your own ministers in your own head by comparing to them so you need to be careful about doing so i know this is going too serious on a light hard question but it's like you know i like my, my cabinet is really good i think I think I've got a really good cabinet. I think I've got the best cabinet the TMP's had for a couple of years. Would I... Do I think it could be improved if I had certain people? Maybe. Is that going to affect how I deal with the cabinet going forward? Not really. My expectations would be the same. I think they're reasonable expectations I've set. I've had discussions with ministers about what the, those expectations are. And, you know, going forward, I'll be work like, my job is to help the ministers put into place both my policy stuff and any ideas they have. And my job is to help them do that. My job is to help them improve things and to do fun things and to, you know, strengthen the ministries and set out a pathway for succession and all that kind of thing. It's it's collaborative. I, I love working with, with people on stuff. And, yeah. I've, I've run out of steam talking no you're good did you have any closing thoughts if not we can go ahead and wrap this up because it's been about an hour I know we talked a little bit ahead of time so you've been talking for over an hour so I understand if um, <laughs> you need to wrap it up <laughs> uh, uh, I, I mean I could talk all day I've just run out of things to talk about just start repeating points um, to sum up excellent election excellent term coming big things coming be prepared be interested be active and you know let's make tmp better and have fun because it should be fun shouldn't it yes it should definitely be fun i was expecting you to start singing uh be prepared from um the lion king but you cannot <laughs> do not do that because we're gonna get a copyright uh, I'm strike. Not, I'm, okay <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to sing. I, I will not sing for you Darn it, I thought we were super close friends, Magic. You're not going to sing for me? Do I need to get you a little drunk? For you to start? <laughs> yes. yes, you need to get me drunk to, for me to sing. And I don't drink anymore, so no one will hear me singing. And, and yeah, we, we're going to carry on like this unless you end the interview. I Okay. We are all good to go. Thanks, everybody, for joining live. Um, thank you for all of you who are listening um, to the recorded version. Um, this has been Bootsy, your Minister of Radio, along with Magic, Delegate of the North Pacific. Hope you're, see- the Minister of, you're the Minister of Media, not the I- Minister of Radio. Oh, did I say Minister of Radio? You did indeed. Did- okay. <laughs> but bye-bye, people. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, We'll fix that in post. (laughs) All right. Bye, guys.